Hi, Jim Feist in Las Vegas, joined again by Kelso Sturgeon. Kelso, welcome aboard. Uh, well, it's how was your good. weekend? Well, uh, after Saturday, I thank God that I was awake and breathing and could stand up. I, I had a lousy day on Saturday, but I did win uh, my biggest play of the day, a 200-unit release on Boise State. On Sunday, I came back firing. Had a great day Sunday. Won my game of the week with Carolina and uh, uh, split last night. What did you think of the uh, games last night? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I've never seen a team in the NFL so ill-prepared to play as was Detroit. And... Uh, and it doesn't matter if the quarterback got hurt or not. This, I, I couldn't believe they weren't sharp. Uh, they, they were just, to me, very lackadaisical, and they were not ready to play, and I think this is quite a reflection on their new coach, you know. you In the NFL, you better be ready for the first snap of the ball to get it done, and they just, I, it was embarrassing. I got to ask you. As for, the, as for the Rams, they're going to have a great season. They're going to go a long way. Yeah, the Rams look really good, but then again, Oakland in the second half didn't. Uh, I, God, I, they look awful. I have a question for you about Matt Patricia. Had, okay. He was the defensive coordinator for New England last year. They went to the Super Bowl, but the defense for New England last year, year was rated actually pretty low. Yeah, they, they weren't very good during the regular season. And in the playoffs, I mean, they gave up over 500 yards for, for damn close to it to Philadelphia. They couldn't stop anybody. And now he gets, he gets a head coaching job replacing Caldwell, who did a reasonable job in Detroit. And they throw the job over to Patricia, who has no experience as a head coach. And their defense last night looked absolutely horrible against... You know, who looks like a very promising Sam Darnold, but still he's a rookie. Um, I mean, is this guy, this Patricia, is he overrated? Did he deserve this job? Well, obviously, after the fact, I can say that he didn't. But, you know, there's a long history of uh, uh, New England coaches, and the first one that comes to mind is Charlie Weiss, who uh, was the offensive coordinator and uh, left to... Uh, uh, coach Notre Dame and all but buried the program there. Uh, ended up, uh, uh, I forget where, then went to Kansas. They absolutely destroyed the football program with Kansas. And I look back at him and some of these other coaches uh, that, uh, you know, took head coaching jobs. Most of them failed. And it led me to believe that the glue that holds New England together is Belichick. I mean, he. He engineers the offense, he engineers the defense, and these other guys are just figureheads. And so I think when you hire an assistant from there, uh, history says that you're going to be very disappointed. And I, I'll tell you one thing, if I was the owner of the Detroit Lions, I would tell the man, one more game like that and you're out the door. Yeah, well, that's not going to happen because they've had – some bad coaches there in the past, and they took forever to get rid of them. They, they, that's not a very well-run organization, and hasn't been no for, for, hasn't been for a long, long time. Um, anything else stand out to you over the weekend? I mean, what the hell happened to the New Orleans Saints? That's only like their sixth year in a row where they lost the first game of the year. Uh, a mystery. I guess they didn't think Fitzgerald could play or something. And uh, he just tore them to pieces. Uh, it's, it's one of these things that, you know, they were the big, uh, the uh, Saints were the biggest favorite on the board at uh, a minus 10. And, you know, it, I'm watching them play, and I said to myself, I can't believe uh, what I'm seeing on the part of, uh, of uh, uh, Tampa Bay. I, I mean, uh, Tampa Bay just ripped them to pieces and just kept right on going. Unexplainable to me. I know that New Orleans is better than that. There's no question about it. You know, the, the, the team that really laid an egg, and I, I, I don't know how this happened, 
the team that really laid an egg was the team that I said, along with Miami, uh, was the worst team in the NFL, and that's Buffalo. Uh, they got buried at Baltimore 47-3. to No quarterback, no offense, no defense. Everybody's confused. The players look like they had never met one another. And uh, uh, that's a new situation with the coach, too. And I, uh, I, the quality of play in, in the Detroit game and in the Buffalo game was nothing short of a total embarrassment uh, for the NFL. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Now, let's, let's look at a positive event. You know, Alex Smith, who's been around a while, I mean, this guy gets, he's like the Rodney Dangerfield of, of uh, the NFL. He's, here he was in the, with the Niners. He was winning 71% of his games. Along comes Colin Kaepernick. And they dump Alex Smith and give the job to Kaepernick. He goes to Kansas City. He's winning there, too. And last year they won that division. He gets traded away from there for a rookie. Well, actually, a second-year rookie. He goes to Washington, and now he looks great there. I mean, this guy is well-prepared. He plays a good game. He, okay, he's not flashy, but he knows how to win, for God's sake. He wins seven out of ten games. <laughs> and he he looked absolutely awesome. Granted, it was against the Cardinals, who aren't very good anyway, but and they have a rookie head coach. But, you know, this guy just doesn't get any respect. And he looks like he's ready to play. Well, you know, the one thing about, I'll be honest with you, when he graduated from, uh, I believe it was Utah, uh, and was drafted in the NFL, I said, this guy is not an NFL quarterback. I've seen him play four or five games. Well, I was as wrong as you could be. He is really a steady hand. And the one thing that he does, he's extremely accurate with his passes. He knows exactly what he's doing and what he wants to do. Seldom throws an interception. And he keeps his team, whoever it might be, in the game right to the end. And uh, uh, he's responsible almost single-handedly for the uh, the win that uh, the teams he's played for get the job done. Looks to me like Washington finally hit the jackpot. Uh, yeah, the, the, well, I don't think they, they didn't do too bad with Kirk Cousins, who looked you know, pretty, pretty uh, looked pretty well at Minnesota last week. Um, what did you think about that game? San Francisco, Garoppolo, Minnesota with the Cousins. What did you think about that game? I, I've heard well, different different analysts say they thought that Garoppolo played really well and other people were very critical of him. Well, you know, he's got a lot of heat on him because, you know, he started 6-0 and at San Francisco uh, last season, I believe it was. And, and uh, uh, you know, he is a good quarterback. There's no question about it. But the expectations uh, uh, on his back are probably not reasonable. And, uh, you know, the, listen, the, the uh, 49ers uh, were playing a pretty decent Minnesota team. There's no question about it. I don't want to be critical of him after one game. I, I think he's going to win a lot of games for the 49ers. Uh, I think that people that think he's going to lead the 49ers to the Super Bowl this year uh, are just kidding themselves. And you know, you've got to have the, uh, a proper supported cast. He doesn't have that. He's got uh, some help. But uh, I, I'm, the jury is going to remain out on him, in my mind, period. I, I tell you one thing, if I had a football team, I wouldn't mind him being my starting quarterback. No, I, I think he has a big future. And talking about a big future, I was shocked at how poised Sam Darnold looked last night. Now, granted, the first play, you roll out to your right, throw the ball across your body to the left. Whoever called that play has to be questioned for their mental acuity. But that was not a very good play, very dangerous play. Gets intercepted, pick six on his first throw, but the rest of the game, he looked amazing. Great poise. He's a real, he's a real deal, and you know, uh, I was always a great uh, Joe Namath fan, and uh, met him the day he arrived at Alabama, uh, and had followed him throughout his entire career. You know, he is so high on this guy, and he's not one that gives his blessing 
uh, to very many people, and he claims that uh, uh, this guy is going to carry the jets uh, right to where they need to be uh, in a year or two, possibly to the Super Bowl. And the fact that knowing uh, Namath and knowing how few people he blesses, uh, I knew this guy had to be the real deal, and he, cer he certainly is. I, he's only going to get better and better and better. I, it, it, yeah, with a little bit more experience, but that, that was a, of course, you're playing the Lions, and we just, you know, talked about Patricia and the way that his defenses have looked um, in the last couple of years. We don't know what we're going to get. <laughs> the Lions go out this week, and they play at San Francisco, and uh, both teams coming off losses. That's going <laughs> to, that's going to be interesting. I mean, I'm a big, I'm a big Matt Stafford fan, but he played an awful game last night, and you have to think yeah. that a guy, you'd have to think somebody like him, 10 years in the league, and is always, yeah, he's a gunslinger, of course, but he's talented, you got to think a guy like him and a Drew Brees, people that had bad games last week, um, well, actually, Brees didn't have a bad game, his defense had a bad game, but, um, you know, it's going to be, uh, for these teams, there's going to be a lot of bounce back coming up this weekend, anything that you want to make a comment about this coming week? Well, you know, I, you're you're a hundred percent right in your <clears throat> in your analysis there. You know, I watched Stafford play, and I said one or two things, and this was from the first time he took the field. I said he's either hurt, he's sick, or he's overdosed on Valium, and uh, <laughs> he that was not him. That absolutely was not him. Uh, he, he's definitely going to bounce back, and I think that uh, uh, uh is going to bounce back too. So this is going to be a, this is going to be a tough match. I lean a little bit uh, 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 towards the uh, 49ers only because I know they have a coach, and uh, I'm not so sure that uh, uh, that Detroit was. But there's a <clears throat> there's a lot of bounce back games in both the colleges and the. Uh, and uh, the uh, uh, pros this week, New Orleans is definitely in bounce back form. Uh, the only thing that scares me is their eight over Cleveland, who's going to play good defense against anybody. Uh, I, the, I think the Cowboys, because they're playing the Giants, are also in bounce back form. But they certainly didn't do anything to uh, to throw anybody, and that's you know that's for sure. Uh, it, it's one of it's one of these things. That, it's it's one of these things where don't judge a team by what what happened this weekend. I mean, there's plenty of football left to play, and and uh, as you pointed out, there's bounce back teams. They they just they didn't show the first time around. They'll show the second time around. It's as simple as that. <clears throat> well, Kelso, you got anything? Uh for the clients out there where they can get your plays and et cetera, et cetera? I most certainly do. Uh, I uh, am, uh, you know, going for a, a full package of college football, full package of the NFL, both Saturday and Sunday highlighted uh, by my college and NFL games of the week. If you'd like my plays, you can get them on the Internet at KelsoSportsHandicapping.com. Or toll free at 1 800 755 2255. Once again, on the internet, Kelso Sports Handicapping.com, and my toll free number 1 800 755 2255. All right, Kelso, thank you very much for your time today. My plays are available at jimfeist.com, as always, and Hank, or Hank is up there as well. Kelso, we'll talk in a couple days. Maybe Thursday we'll do another, uh, we'll do a, a preview of what's I, coming up. I enjoy it. I always look forward. And all you've got to do is say the word and I'll be here. Thank you, Kelso. And thank you, everybody out there, for listening.